Now, know during the initial interview, there's several things that are going to be happening. They're going to be asking, the interviewer is going to be asking you questions, and the questions, your responses are going to be almost scripted, okay? And then they're going to be scored. Uh, most of the districts use some sort of a rubric, a predetermined <coughs> rubric, so, um, to kind of establish the level of performance for each candidate. Now with that said, we went ahead and um, it provided you with something of, this is kind of what ours looks like, so you will kind of see. There's a certain level of expectation and contingent upon what you, your responses are, well, you would fall under one of the, the levels of, of proficiency. Okay. With that said, then you're going to look at, we would look at, okay, so with, the, with that, you know, what is the probability of this individual being successful in our district or with our students? Now, we have, um, this is really in an effort to calibrate our responses so that we know we're looking for the same level of, um, of applicants. Uh, in some cases, they have programs that really make those assessments, and others, we, they have individualized um, uh, measures that will make those that will help make those determinations. So this is a sample. And this type of format is used almost at every level, almost at every level of the interview. So whether it's an initial, whether you're in front of a panel, or whether you're in front of a, a you're at a campus. Okay. Oh, yes. Sorry, I have a quick question. Can okay. you say that this PowerPoint is going to be available to us? Yes. We're going to link it for a for now, I'm going to tell you that we have the luxury for this morning of really taking our time and talking to you about the process, okay? So, really take advantage because simply just kind of reading all that, is, it may not be enough, so it's a really good thing. It's a really good thing that you're asking questions because our goal is for you to leave knowing something, you know, more in-depth information about what the process is. So let's talk about when you start off. Now, it is our belief that when an applicant comes in, we are not going to position anyone um, or have anyone in the position that they feel intimidated or that they... More, you're nervous and we recognize that. So we want to put you at ease. Most districts do that, if not all. Everyone should. Everyone should. Because what's going to happen if you feel a little calmer? What's going to happen? You're going to perform better. You're going to be able to share your experiences. You're, we're really going to be able to obtain more information if you, if you establish that level of comfort. And so, for the most part, you'll find that districts start off with something, just start telling me about yourself. What is it that you do? Okay? That really opens up the opportunity for you to share what you're comfortable sharing. And things that you are really good at and what you've done. So some things to kind of consider as you're responding to these answers would be like, um, having, are, you, are, are your um, responses, do, do they center around students? Okay? What is it that they do? What type of volunteer experiences have you had? Okay, so that they know that you've been working with children, not just studying to be. Okay, so what's your relationship with peers? You know, at this point, collaboration is essential. It is essential. And you have to demonstrate that you have the ability to work with others. And that's not always easy because we as professionals have our have our opinions of how things need to work or how things need to function and you have to have what type, what type of flexibility do you have with that and then you really have to right I could hear you chit chatting and everybody was kind of walking around I could hear we could hear the excitement the energy you have to have that in your energy but don't get carried away <laughs> don't get carried away you don't want to go overboard Okay, so you have, to, you have to find a balance. Now, almost always you're going to have some sort of curriculum question. Now, I can share this with you. Questions are not going to be simple questions at the knowledge level. They are going to be, and they could be, if not in forms of, you know, in scenarios. So
so that you're demonstrating the application of what you would normally answer. So think about that. And you really, we encourage you to practice. Okay. Practice makes perfect, and it does. Well, let me just clarify. Good practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> Some people say practice makes permanent, and that's true, true. Well, that's something that maybe could have could have improved a little. You have to be able to demonstrate that you had you took immediate action. You're not waiting until the lesson's complete or you're at the end of the week before you make any adjustments. That's critical. You have to have demonstrate that ability to have that informal assessment taking place. You know that this is working or this is. And then with that said, um, making sure that what you have is tied to state standards and that you're consistent with, with, with the grade level. So if you're going in and you're saying this is going to be you know, I'm gonna. I'm going to be answering. Or um, if you were, if the interviewer says, if you were in a second grade class or you were in an eighth grade class, how would you address whatever objective? Then you have to make sure that it's at the, at the appropriate level. So those are some things to kind of think about. You differentiate instruction, and I tossed that term out earlier, but it's not about saying I would differentiate instruction. What could you say? How? Oh, this is how I would adjust my lesson for uh, a uh, second language learner that may be in my classroom. Okay. This is how I would adjust to uh, a student that's in my classroom with an IEP, Individualized Education Plan. This is how I would intervene with a student that's exhibiting difficulty, but we're, we're, we haven't really identified what the source is. How are you? This is what I'm going to do for those. I have some. I have some high achievers that really finish their their work quickly, and this is how I'm going to stimulate and take the person to the next level. So you have to be able to, to kind of share those things because you will have, even though everyone is on grade level, you will have students that are from one extreme to another. Okay? And your ability to kind of adjust accordingly. Um, did I get through all of them? <coughs> Instructional strategies, response to intervention, make sure you can look that up. Now, for the most part, we call them domains, but these are really central themes that you can count on as, as uh, having questions that revolve around these, these domains. So an overview, when we talk about an overview, it's kind of like setting the stage, getting you in there, getting you comfortable, what have you done to prepare, prepare you, those types of things. The curriculum, of course, Assessments, so how, what types of assessments are you going to be using? Mostly, um, and consider not only formal assessments, which are paper pencil tasks, also think about informal ways to assess the students. Uh -huh. Simple as doing this, right? Someone just demonstrated, right? Um, but also um, through your questioning techniques, uh, through your monitoring in the classroom. So think about how you're going to be able to make those, those um, evaluations. And then the classroom environment, okay, so how is it going to be a nurturing, okay, risk-free environment? So these are items because they will come up. Um, of course, student management, that, will, that, is, that is a definite because everyone's going to want to know. I mean, and it's a first-year teacher, it's not, it's not uncommon not to have a perfect classroom, okay, but we want to know, we want to know. We have, we have better teachers. Because sometimes we just may have that, that, that challenging child that you, we're going to have to collaborate with our, with our co-workers to see how we can intervene. And that's probably one of the key elements is knowing, is, is, say, is knowing who you can go to for assistance. Because we know not everyone, not everyone, not anyone knows everything. Right? Okay? I, can, I can't pretend to sit here and know everything. But I can tell you I know who to ask if I, if I don't know anything. That's the key. And having that confidence to go and do it. Okay, and then of course professionalism. And with professionalism, we tie in that, what else do you do? That going above and beyond, being able to work with your peers. Okay? And uh, working collaboratively. So those are some of the things that, that we have. And I shared with you earlier that you really do need to anticipate most of the questions in form of scenarios. Now one of my friends is, that's at another district in, uh, she shared one time when uh, we were doing a similar presentation that uh, 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 you can Google online possible questions, and I actually did it, and there are multiple resources 
that have, if you go online and you put your uh, interview questions, and they really do provide you with a, with a wealth of questions that you can practice with. <coughs> practice and have uh, good responses for. Okay, so now, other things that you need to be prepared to talk about really would be your parental involvement. How are you going to, how are you going to establish a partnership? with the community. Okay, so it's not only about you teaching. Okay, it, it is a united a united effort that's going to move these students where they need to be and beyond. And um, also look at think about your training. Okay. How are you going to continue your professional right um, your professional growth? <clears throat> and what is it that you're going to do? Now are you going to start this summer? Some of you are doing it now and meet in our district every Wednesday and are having professional growth. So what, how will you demonstrate that? Also looking at portfolios. Now, um, some will, will come in to an interview with a portfolio, and if you have a portfolio, it is a wonderful opportunity to share what you've, been done, what you've done, okay, what contributions you've made to our profession, even though, okay, you're just looking for a first first year position. But with that said, to, I, we recommend recommend that you use your portfolio, you bring one in, as a reference tool. Do not rely on it for every single question that's asked. Okay? You may have principals or, or directors or people at different levels that say, you know what, um, they may not, you may, they may not ask a question that you're able to reference. But they may come back and say, well, share with us what is the most important thing that you've collected. And that's really going to say a lot about you. Okay, so are, are they necessary? No, they're not necessary. If, you, if you've invested time and effort for them, we really want to make sure that your work, we have that ability to see. Okay, so kind of really follow what the lead of the other <coughs> Okay, because they'll let you know at what level they want you to bring that in. So some people um, have a site where they have their um, their application, not their application, their resume and their portfolio, and it's on online, and they just let us know where that site is, and it's usually done at the school level, and then the principals and teachers can go look at your um, all the time. Okay. All right. So what else? Um, at the conclusion of the interview, almost every single interview they're going to ask, do you have any questions for me, for us? <coughs> do you have any questions for us? Not at this time. You could probably have a better response. Okay, than saying, uh, no, not, 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 not at this time. Think about these things. Okay. Ask about, you have, this is where your research comes in because you have to know what district you're interviewing for. If you're at the district level interview, then you're going to look for, for interests of the district or what the district, what the initiatives are for that district. These are where you can zero in so that a district interviewer has the ability, will be able to understand or, or know, have the knowledge that you've been able to go in and research. That's, that's critical. Because we want to know that you know about our students and that you know what our what our what what is what our vision is and what our mission is. Okay? And so with that said, that would be the very first thing. You could ask about the mentor program, what type of support system. Now I read on your online that, that you have an induction program at the beginning of the year. Is there a support system throughout that throughout the year? Okay. Tell me a little bit more about that mentor program. I didn't just ask to tell me about the mentor program, did I? What did I include in that? I understand, yeah, I read, I understand, and I said something that was specific to that district. Okay, staff development opportunities. Great I have time for you to share how you have that willingness to continue that professional growth. What type of opportunities, I understand that, or I know that, the district has program directors that provide staff development for the district. How um, do you see your teachers utilizing those opportunities? How would I be able to access those opportunities? Those are the types of questions that you want to ask that are specific. 
Um, and then the time frame, no. They always ask, is it appropriate to ask when a decision will be made? Absolutely. <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, now, I, we would never recommend that you keep calling. Have you made a decision? <laughs> Have you made a decision? <laughs> Have you made a decision? Okay? Because that probably won't be, a, it's not a good idea. But you certainly, right, it, it's okay to ask. You know, I know that you're going to be interviewing multiple applicants. Do you have a time frame in which you're going to be making a decision? So you know that if within that time frame, you haven't heard from them, then you know that maybe they made another decision, but that's okay to call and just check. I know that you've had that position been filled. That's it, okay? So be very cautious not to over, overstep out. So, we're, we, you know what? You have done an outstanding job completed your initial interview, and you have been asked to come back and demonstrate a lesson to a panel of, of individuals. In our case, it's a panel of principals. Did you have a question before we move on? Yeah. Um, we, were, we were asking our discussing this a little quick. Is there anything, or is there such thing as uh, applying like a late application or is it too late to apply something? We know we're applying early, but is there such thing as applying too late? Well, I'm going to tell you, applying too late would be, um, if you're, if you're, would be defined if you're applying um, in the last week of July and expecting employment for August. Okay? That would probably be a little bit. Okay? Um, is, there, is there a definition of late? Um, I, I haven't seen any, any, any districts that say, after this date, your application is late. I haven't seen that. Um, but... You certainly want to get ahead. Okay, so the active recruiting season is starting. And so the sooner you are in there, the sooner the, the, the better possibilities you have of assuming the position. Okay? But I can also tell you this that positions, uh, you know, we look at the very first week of school and we track that information for several weeks. And in some cases, there's a need to add teachers uh, because of the student population has increased more than anticipated. And so there isn't a, so I guess there's not a time in which we do not ever hire because we look at it according to the needs of the campus and of the district, okay? But you have better opportunities for the fall semester if you start now, okay? All right, so let's take a look. Let's move on. We're looking at, 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 the, at, the, at, the, at the panel interview or, or your, uh, your demonstrating a lesson. Know that for the most part, this part of the process won't take long. You're not, you will, you will absolutely not have 45 minutes. Okay? For a complete block to demonstrate the lesson. So what does that mean? Ooh, a mini lesson. What is essential of the lesson that I'm going to demonstrate for them to know? Okay? So if you're thinking about that, you can come in with manipulatives, people come in with storyboards, they come in with their board, whatever it is that you would use deliver that instruction you, you, you would plan to bring with you. Demonstrate how the student needs would be met. So how is it that we're able to kind of address the multiple needs? So then you're not going to do a paper pencil test or a demo of lesson, right? That would, could be part of your assessment, but you probably want to go through the through how are you going to kind of level instruction so that they understand the objective, okay? Now, with that said, Make sure that you include the objective, okay? When you're there, you want to state it and you want to write it, and you also want to include a grade level because they're going to, to, they're going to want to know whether or not uh, the lesson that you've developed is age appropriate. Is, you know, is it rigorous? Uh, those types of things. Now, because you will not be able to, to complete a full, a full lesson, okay, uh, as you would normally design it, we would recommend that you take a copy of your lesson plans and leave that for them to review so that even if you're only doing a snapshot of your lesson, they're still going to understand, oh, this is the reason that why they started at this level. This is, I understand why they, 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 they're doing this during uh, the, the guided instruction. And then, oh, okay, as a follow-up or at the end, this is how this, this part of the lesson would be assessed. Did you have something to share? No? So those are, those are definitely key elements to consider because you won't have a lot of time. And you, you think you're going to be nervous for 15 minutes? 
and oh my goodness, you know, I'm going to have the people watching me demonstrate a lesson, that time will be quick and it will stop me. Okay? Any questions on that? And you can prepare now because as you're in the classrooms, look at some good teaching that's taking place and start jotting down notes because that will help you when you're getting ready to, 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 to prepare your lesson. Okay? Okay, so lesson plans are important. I think I already shared this. Um, make sure that you have some sort of structured lesson plan. Okay, um, whatever lesson plan format that you have here, it's probably going to be um, it's going to be okay to use. Just make sure that it's structured. And includes some of some really critical elements. Now, I've included four uh, four things to consider, and these are also items that we're looking at um, when we even appraise teachers. So uh, with that said, you know, teacher preparation. So how have you, um, how have you been able to demonstrate that you are ready to deliver the lesson? It's not just having it there, it's also how do you know your students? So think about those types of needs as you're developing your lessons. The classroom environment kind of echoes what we talked about with the different domains within your questions. Also looking at the lesson delivery. So are you going to be standing up and doing all the talking? Are you going to have students be actively engaged in the lesson? Are you going to have multiple opportunities for them to acquire the learning? And if so, how? So include all that in the lesson. And then professional responsibilities. Are you going to research and look? Uh, how are you going to um, uh, get the community involved in what you're doing? You, those types of things. Okay, and it may not be specific to one objective, but it could be to a uh, to a unit or whatever it is that you're going to be teaching. Now, um, have extra lesson plans because when you leave, I guarantee you they're going to read to see what you had in your lesson plan. And again, make sure that you had somebody look over it because if you have an I that's not capitalized, if we're talking I, okay, it will be.